Good afternoon. Um, I'm Ashley Mori. I'm the chamber chairperson for this year, uh, the chamber board chairperson for 2020. Um, and we have had to get very creative this year in light of COVID um, and making sure that we are still providing great information to our community. And we are have been um, taking on the virtual world um, and trying to get that information out um, to our community and to our membership in many virtual ways. So this is one of the ways that we've decided to do that. Um, and this show is called Chamber Connect. This is our third episode. Um, they've been really popular so far, and we think this one is going to be extra popular. Um, we want to make sure that we're still getting relevant information out to you guys. And so today we can't think of anything more relevant than what's going on with our school systems when, and our schools and our community. Um, and and so we have two very, very busy people who have taken time out to come sit with us today and tell us a little bit about what's going on in their schools. Um, I have to thank Jefferson Energy, Energy Cooperative, who very um, generously um, decided to um, sponsor this event. They do so much for the schools in our area, and we appreciate them so much. And you'll hear a little word from them um, in just a little bit. So this is the way this works. We're live on our Facebook um, our Chamber Facebook page, and we're also live on our YouTube channel. Please feel free to comment. Um, there will be a chance um, later on to ask questions toward the end, um, but please uh, give a shout out to these two hardworking educators who have decided to join us, who have make it, made time to join us today. Um, we are going to update you guys on everything going on with Briarwood Academy and the McDuffie County School System in relation to COVID. Um, we know you want to know about this and our schools are so vital in our community. So we want to take a minute and we wanted to take this opportunity to talk with the leaders. We're going to start with Briarwood today. Um, Headmaster Clayton Parrish is joining us. Um, and I'm just going to get him to tell, I'm going to ask him a couple questions and get him to tell us what's going on out at Briarwood. So my first question is, tell us about your plans for instruction in relation to COVID-19. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Ashley, for having us on. I, I really do appreciate it. And uh, just to let you know, our plans of instruction right now are to try to keep things as normal as possible. We're, uh, we're currently doing in-person instruction uh, for all of our students. Uh, we did not provide uh, a distance learning option like a lot of schools around us have, uh, but we do have distance learning protocols in place. Say if we have to have some teachers that quarantine, if we have students that have to quarantine, uh, we've got those uh, in place as far as say if a teacher has to quarantine, then uh, we're, doing, uh, we're doing live sessions with our teachers through Google Meets. We're doing Screencastify where we can record our lectures where the students can access those things through our learning man man management system through uh, RenWeb, and, uh, which is our student information system. Um, and so our students and teachers alike, if they have to quarantine, which we've already actually had a few, we've been in school almost three weeks now, um, we've had to do that. Um, and it, it seems to be pretty successful. So, uh, so, but, but for the most part, our in-person instruction has gone really well, and uh, and we're going to continue to do that. Okay, um, tell us about any safety measures that have been implemented since um, reopening. Yeah, there are quite a few, which uh, which you know all schools have had to go through. Um, it's a very very busy summer trying to implement as many uh, safety measures as possible. Um, just a few of them that we've done that's kind of school-wide. Uh, we do daily temperature checks of all employees and students before they can enter the buildings. Um, we require that everybody wear a mask when you're transitioning, uh, say from one class to, the, to another. Uh, we've modified our bell schedule for our middle and high school classes where uh, they're not in the, the classrooms at the same time. Um, one of the bigger things that we did this summer is we installed uh, an ionization system called uh, Phenomenal Air. Uh, we installed that this summer that's supposed to help the spread of not just uh, coronavirus, but, but anything from staph infections to, the, to flu to common cold, that kind of thing. Um, we've hired uh, a full-time person that's just in charge of disinfecting high-touch, high touch, high uh, transporting areas, uh, and that's the only thing that she does throughout the day. 
Um, we've also to help kind of implement the social distancing where we can, where we have some larger gatherings or we converted a practice gym into a lunchroom uh, where our students can sit six feet apart, uh, be able to eat there. But also at the same time, we're, we're lucky enough that um, all of our elementary grades are divided into two sections. And so they can socially distance in their classrooms. So we've been having them eat in their classrooms uh, just to kind of keep keep everybody isolated as much as possible. That's one of the things that's a little more difficult is we are K through 12. So trying to keep our lower elementary separate from our upper elementary and, and middle school away from lower elementary um, has been a little difficult, but, uh, but for the most part, it's gone extremely well. Um, and, you know, having different buildings that the students are in has helped. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, just little things, it, you know, like, uh, limiting the playground time, when students are on the playground, how many students are on the playground, sanitizing playground equipment. Uh, that's kind of been our biggest thing is, is uh, making sure if we can't socially distance, we wear a mask and then if and then just sanitizing as much as possible. Great. Thank you. Um, what about what is the status for school sports right now? Uh, school sports are on a uh, are going as scheduled. Um, uh, I will say that that now that we've gotten the, st the school year started, it's going to be one of our bigger challenges, making sure that um, that everybody's doing what they're supposed to. Our students, our faculty and staff have done a tremendous job during the school day of trying to keep our Briarwood community safe. Um, I think it's going to be important that our parents uh, try to do the same thing at sporting events. And, um, and it's been a little bit of a challenge so far. But I think our parents are responding. We actually had our parents sign a commitment form that they would do those things for us outside of the normal school hours. And, and so they've done pretty well with that. Um, but other places I've mentioned, uh, mentioned that, you know, the lunchroom, how we social distance there as far as large gatherings go. Um, we don't have it, we haven't had any assemblies. We did our open house all virtually. Um, right now we don't have any plans to do any pep rallies. So, um, so, you know, those sort of be kind of the events where um, where we would have large gatherings during the school day. And we're, we're lucky enough where we've got just under 400 students. So it's a little bit easier for us to keep our our larger gatherings to a minimum. Gotcha. Um, so what information or guidelines are you following to aid in your decision making moving forward? Well, definitely uh, we're going to follow what the, the guidelines of the CDC and that's and, you know, seems to be ever changing, but we stay in touch with the CDC, um, also the Georgia Department of Health. Um, we're um, closely monitoring things with that, the Warren County Health Department. Uh, we stay in contact with them, uh, but also um, had a very good collaboration with other private schools in the area that are very similar to us. Uh, when we put our plan to return, uh, you know, plan of action to return to school, uh, did a lot of uh, collaborating with that. And just kind of seeing, you know, how other schools that are very similar to us, you know, how they're handling particular situations. And, uh, and so that I would say those are the three main things that, that we're watching right now. OK. And under what circumstances would you sort of consider implementing a different instructional model? Like what are what right. has to happen in order for you to say oh, we got to go home? Right. Absolutely. And obviously that's going to be on the, the number of cases you're seeing, whether it's positive cases with, with your uh, student body, uh, whether it's positive cases with, it, with your employees, where these positive cases are, are coming up. We've got several distance learning plans in place right now are ready to implement if we need to, where if we say have a, number, a teacher shortage in our high school, uh, then we'll look to possibly send everybody home in the high school, uh, do distance learning there for a few weeks. Um, or if it's, if, if it's in elementary, we'll do that. If we see a spike in say the lower elementary, we might look to uh, send them home. Uh, but, it, but we don't really have a particular number um, say if 25% of the student body is gone, we're, uh, we're going to shut everything down. Uh, we're not really looking at it that way. We're looking at, uh, because we can keep everybody somewhat divided, our lower elementary is in one building, our upper elementary is in one building, our middle and high schools in the main building. And so we're kind of just monitoring that 
uh, to see where we are. And then once again, it's it's not even as much of our students. We've, we've got students that are quarantining, um, but we don't have any students that have tested positive right now. Um, it's, it's a matter of they've either had siblings that have come back from college and they've tested positive, so it's direct exposure or their parents have. Um, but we have had a few teachers that have, and so we just have to really monitor that. Um, if we see that instruction is, we're starting to lose instruction a little bit um, because we have so many teachers that are out, um, then then we'll look to maybe change that. But uh, but as far as particular number, we're, we're not going to put a specific number on that now. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. If you'll hang on, sit tight. We'll come back to you for questions. Sure. We'll switch over to Dr. Rhodes, and then we'll be back with you. So sit tight. I know you're super busy, but hang uh, in there for just a little bit longer with us. Thank right. you so much. Thank you. Um, we're going to switch over to Dr. Michelle Rhodes with McDuffie County School System now. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to get a quick word uh, from Jefferson Energy, who has graciously agreed to um, sponsor this event. So let's hear from them. Hey, everybody. Steve Chalker here with Jefferson Energy. And first of all, I'd just like to thank Debbie and her team at the Chamber for allowing us to be a small part of this today and for what they do uh, by keeping us informed with everything that's going on with the businesses and, and everything else that's going on in our community during this unprecedented time. You know, Jefferson Energy has always been committed to being a good partner in education. One of the seven cooperative principles is uh, commitment to community or concern for community and, and certainly our education system is a huge part of that community and uh, whether it's our cooperative outreach for education, donation program, the Bright Eye Bright Ideas Grant Program, uh, the Washington Youth Tour, Foundation Scholarships, and many other things that we, uh, we are involved with with the schools, uh, not only that we serve, but a lot of the schools that are in our area. And uh, we're gonna be fortunate, we're gonna be able to continue that this year. So we've, we've got some good stuff going on as far as uh, you know, partnering with our schools. And uh, that being said, I'd like to thank Dr. Michelle Rhodes and Clayton Parrish and their faculty and staff, the school board, the board at Briarwood, uh, for what they're doing to keep our uh, young kids engaged and uh, getting them educated, uh, regardless of the situation. Uh, who knows what the future is going to bring, but certainly uh, we're glad that they're doing the good work that they are. So with that, just want to thank everybody. Hang in there. Uh, we're going to make it through this. and. Uh, Jefferson Energy is going to be here and just let us know if there's anything we can do for you. Thanks. Again, thank you so much to Jefferson Energy. They really, really do support education in our community um, and put a lot of time and energy and money um, into our education systems here um, in our county. So I'm going to ask Dr. Rhodes to join us now. Um, she is going to give us all the updates on McDuffie County. We have some late breaking news, sort of. Uh, thank you for joining us. We know you're busy, um, very busy, and so we really appreciate it. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Tell us about your plans for instruction related to COVID. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you, Ashley and Debbie, as well as the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. Thank you to Jefferson Energy for always being a strong partner in this community and supporting the education system. We certainly appreciate those efforts. We do have some, some breaking news, so to speak, as far as McDuffie County Schools, and we're very pleased to share that with our community. As of yesterday afternoon, we made our decision in regards to our start next week on Tuesday, September the 8th. Previously, we had indicated in our reopening plan for McDuffie County Schools, if our community was at a point of moderate spread, we would reopen schools with a blended model of instruction. We recognize that face-to-face -face learning is ideal and is best for all children, and that is our ultimate goal during this pandemic. We will be opening next week with an A-B schedule. This is beginning on Tuesday. We have A-Day students and B-Day students. A-Day students will attend on Mondays and Tuesdays of each week, B-Day students on Wednesday and Thursday, and all students engaged in our virtual platforms on Fridays. The reason that we made this decision, of course, is due to the data that we have, as well as the moderate spread in the community. 
creating a blended model allows us to take our student population and divide into 50 percent so we have our learn from home students that's approximately 1300 children in our community and then doing the a b block schedule we are actually on a days around a thousand students and on b days around a thousand students this enables us to social distance in classrooms and keep our students faculty and staff as safe as possible great thank you so much um so you're saying that your data is based, your decision is based on, that was our next question, your decision is based on public health yeah. data, correct? Yeah, and, and we've used a, a myriad of resources throughout this pandemic, of course, reaching back to March. The Department of Public Health, the Centers for Disease Control, John Hopkins, World Health Organization, local physicians as well as our local health department have all been vital resources for us in our data points as we've continued to monitor the situation again using the georgia's path for recovery for k-12 schools we have used the substantial spread moderate spread minimal spread models to determine our decision making and we'll continue to model monitor our data as we bring students back face to face next week. Great. So since we're going to a blended model and some there will still be a significant amount of virtual learning or some some virtual learning. Tell us a little bit about what we've put in what you've put in place to, um, to provide Internet access for students to do virtual learning. Absolutely. I'd, I'd like to begin with. We have a learn from home, a learning resources page on our system website. Using that page, parents have tip sheets, links to resources. There is a plethora and an abundance of instructional materials available and guidance for our community. It's very important when we ask parents to transition to virtual learning that they have the directions and the details to be able to provide the assistance to their children. Throughout this whole process, beginning in March of last school year, we began at our central office, the central office cabinet, making a plan for how we would enact virtual learning. I'm proud to say that we have issued over 1,400 Chromebooks to students, over 250 hotspots, 200 more have arrived this afternoon, actually right before we began this interview. We've issued 65 flash drives for children to be able to go to our Wi-Fi access points to download their lessons and then return home to be able to complete their assignments. We have 300 more Chromebooks that will arrive next week. They are in the etching process at this point. In addition to that, we recognize that Wi-Fi is a, quite a challenge for our community. And you'll see in this picture, this is one of our students at one of our Wi-Fi access points. You can see our school resource officer vehicle in the back corner of the car window. We're utilizing our school resource officers as well as our Department of Transportation to provide different Wi-Fi access points throughout the day, throughout McDuffie County, based on our feedback and our surveys of our community. We have hot spots from 8.30 to 11.30 at Calvary Baptist in Deering, Rolling Wood Apartments here in Thompson, Thompson Villas. From 12.30 to 2.30, we have access points at Sweetwater Activity Center, Rolling Wood Apartments. And we also recognize that our parents are working. And so there are times that they need to be able to visit these Wi-Fi access points after their work day. We have three that we offer from 5.30 to 7.30 each night, one at Union Baptist, one at Rollingwood Apartments, and one at Happy Valley Store. At those stations, 60 devices can be served within 300 feet of the Wi-Fi access point. And again, we used our data from our surveys from our community last spring to determine where we would strategically place those points. So I just have to give this shout out from a chamber perspective. You've totally highlighted why we need rural broadband, which we've we, been we, screaming about 
out at the chamber for years. Very much, very much yeah. as a community. I know, I know this is a hot topic with our city and our county, and we all plan to work together to be able to resolve the issue, of course, as quickly as we can. Absolutely. Um, so another question a lot of parents had, I know, was for students who depend on the school lunch program, um, on our nutrition programs, how are we, tell us about how students are getting, getting lunches provided. Right. I'd be glad to do that. A large majority of our students in the McDuffie County School System participate in both breakfast and lunch programs. So it was critical when the closure began that we were able to provide food services to our children in the community. We began this in the spring with a grab and go program at various sites in the community. Since that time, since the month of August, we have been delivering to every home who chose to participate. And you'll see the, the fleet of buses here. This was the first day we began breakfast and lunch delivery. This is about 6.45 in the morning at Deering Elementary School as our buses were being loaded. We have asked for our parents, of course, to opt into us bringing breakfast and lunch to their homes. We have been running two routes per day to ensure that our children are receiving a nutritious meal for both breakfast and lunch. In addition to that, as we come back to school and we have students on campus, we will not be doing the daily delivery on Monday through Thursday. We will continue that on Friday as all of our students are engaged in virtual learning. So again, we'll be doing the meal deliveries home to home, breakfast to lunch. On Monday through Thursday, we will be offering pickup, grab and go programs at each of the schools during elementary, 7.45 to 8.15, 11.30 to noon at the front entrance, Maxwell Elementary, 8.15 to 8.45, 11.30 to noon at the cafeteria at the rear of the school, Norris, 8.15 to 8.45, 11.30 to noon on the bus ramp, Thompson Elementary, those same times on the bus ramp, Thompson McDuffie Middle School, 8 to 8.30, 12 to 12.30 on the bus ramp, and Thompson High School, located at the bus ramp, 7.45 to 8.15, 11.30 to noon. Again, with the ultimate goal to ensure that our learn from home children are still receiving meals on a daily basis. Great, and that information is all, is listed all on the, on the learn from home site. Yes, it, it's also okay. on the system webpage. This was included in the press release that we did yesterday, okay. as well as on our Facebook page. Great. Okay. Um, I think this is our last question, but tell us a little bit about the virtual platforms that teachers have put in place. Sure. I'd be glad to. We, we again began, of course, researching all of the mechanisms that we could put into place in March when this first began, because what we wanted to be able to do is provide the most robust instructional model for our children and for our families. We have, it since that time, of course, began several different in initiatives to provide the best instruction we can to students. We are a Google district. We are utilizing Google Classroom and Google Meets. Teachers are recording lessons. Students are meeting with their teacher through Google Meets. In the event that they are not able to tune into live sessions, there are recordings for those children to be able to watch at their own time. In addition to that, we have implemented a single sign-on for all of our computer and instructional software programs. The sign-on is referred to as CLEVER. This allows parents to utilize one login and one password. I know that many of us, when you, when you make a password for different programs, sometimes you forget. So we wanted to be sure that we made this as simplistic as possible for our community. We have issued a Google guide to our parents. This is on our Learn From Home resource page. We're using several instructional platforms, Edgenuity, USA Test Prep, Lexia, and other resources, Star Reading, Star Math, and iReady to be sure that our children have what they need. I would like to add a, a couple of different safety mechanisms in place for next Tuesday when we reopen. 
The system reopening plan is located on the school system's webpage. I encourage those in our community to review that information. It is very thorough as far as our approach to what we plan to do to keep our faculty, staff, and students safe. We do have distance markers that are in place to ensure that particularly our primary age children and our elementary age children that have difficulty determining six feet apart. But those students are able to do that and those have been placed strategically, of course, in our buildings. Hand sanitizing stations are at all entrances, at all major commons areas within our schools. This too is important to ensure that our children are keeping their hands clean throughout the day. All water fountains will be closed off during this time of COVID. We are closing locker rooms. There will not be dressing out at PE. We will not be using musical instruments during this time. So there's a just a number of things that we've put into place because our number one priority is to keep our students safe and our faculty and our staff. I'm glad you covered that because that wasn't the last question. I forgot to turn the page. So thanks for catching okay. that. I that. Sorry. That's all um, right. The next question is the current status of school sports. School sports. We actually have our first home football game that will occur this Friday evening. We issued a press release yesterday. Of course, our high school sports are governed by the Georgia High School Association. So we rely upon the direction from GHSA as we make our plans. We met last week with local officials and we made our plans for both middle school and high school athletics. We are doing all of our ticket sales online so that there is not any, any touching back and forth of money or tickets at the stadium. We are limiting at 30% capacity of our stadium to ensure the ability to social distance this enables us to have 1,200 home fans and approximately 300 guests in our stadium and keep them socially distanced. We are requiring masks in the stadium. That is going to be a requirement so that we can ensure the safety of our patrons. And we will continue, of course, to monitor throughout the games to ensure that individuals are kept safe and all of these all of these guidelines are in place on the Thompson High School Facebook page. Great. Um, last question. Long term plans for instruction moving forward. What do you anticipate? That kind of thing. We are continuing the blended model until October the 5th. That is the end of the first nine weeks for our students. We plan to continue that model until then. Of course, just as we've done since March, we'll continue to utilize all of our data resources to make the determination of how we move forward after that date of October. We'll continue to utilize what we have in our recovery and reopening plan, which is if we're at substantial spread, we would be forced at that point to go 100% learn from home virtual. If we're at moderate, we'll continue our blended model. And if we're at a minimal point at the 1st of October, we will bring our students back face to face. Great. OK, thank you. We know you're, you're busy. welcome. I appreciate it. Um, if you'll sit tight, um, we're going to come see. back together and answer any questions um, that viewers posted. Um, I have to give a shout out to Debbie Jones back in at the office who is running the whole thing. We're literally, the three of us are just sitting here talking, but she's running the whole thing. So um, I don't see her putting up any questions. So maybe we don't have any questions. Uh, Coach Parrish, was there anything else you wanted to cover that you did it that maybe we didn't miss? Or is there anything else you want to touch on? Yeah. Um it was something Dr. Rhodes had touched on a little bit too, but uh, you know, one thing that I had mentioned about being a challenge and, and I really do feel good about how our school day is going right now. Um, but it's, it's the extracurricular activities um, and, you know, and, and having that commitment from our Briarwood community to do what they need to do. Um, we're, at this point, we are not limiting the uh, fans that come to our games uh, or any of our events that are after school. Um, but if, if social distancing can't be practiced, if we're, if we're not wearing masks when we need to, that, that is something that, that could definitely be something that we look to do in the future. 
So uh, just to any of our Briarwood family members that are out there, I, I need for them to help encourage that because um, as Dr. Rhodes said, we've been working extremely hard to keep our children safe here at school, but, uh, but the, this, this pandemic doesn't go away after three o'clock each day. Um, we, we still need for everybody to do their part in making sure that we're keeping the children safe and our families safe. Great. Uh, Dr. Rhodes, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on that we didn't get to cover? Since it doesn't look like we have any questions, you must have answered all the questions anybody could have had. I, I would concur that really th this is so much larger than the precautions that we can build as a school system or a school. We do need the help of our community. We, we need to encourage what, what has been asked from our governor, and that, of course, is to wear masks when you can't socially distance, to encourage hand washing. We, one thing that I did not mention, we will be placing beginning tomorrow on our Facebook page. We had our lead nurse to make videos to teach, teach parents how to screen their children and the symptoms to watch for, and also how to appropriately wear a mask. Because we all realize if a mask is not placed appropriately, it's not going to provide the necessary protection. So again, this is more than, than just the eight to three school day. This is our entire community working together to, to survive this pandemic and to be able to get past our current situation. Absolutely. Well, um, okay. We do have a question. Uh, Dr. Rhodes, will absences be counted within the first nine weeks due to the lack of inter due to lack of internet? That that is an excellent question. And the answer to that is no. Absences are determined based on children not submitting assignments. So lack of internet should not be an issue. If the assignments are submitted, I mentioned the flash drives that families can drive to the Wi-Fi access points and download download lessons onto flash drives. The purpose of that is to circumvent the inability to utilize the internet. So as long as assignments are submitted in the timeline designated by the assigned teacher, then it is not an absence. Great question. Okay. Um, what is the number one struggle for students during this time? I, I mean, I feel like I could answer that, but I'll let either of you, you take it. Well, I, and I'll, I'll let, uh, Clayton, add to this, I, I think all children work best as we do as adults in, in normalcy. And most certainly the last few months have shown all of us that our circumstances are not normal at the time. I think that children, children need social connections, as do adults. And we're doing our best to provide those through the Google Meets. They need the face-to-face. -face. They need to be connected with their peers as well as their teachers. And that's a part of utilizing virtual instruction through Google Meets or Zoom, or even the platform that we're using now is to still have that personal connection to those within the school and then the children. Right. right. I, I would agree 100% with that. And even with us being in person, uh, right now, still having to be to socially distance uh, when there is a, a gathering, say at lunch, um, you you can tell that the children are doing a great job with it. But it's still it's, the children still don't get to interact with each other like they want to. And and uh, I w I would agree too. When we do our Google Meets with teachers that are that are not able to come in uh, for a certain number of days. Uh, just being in a classroom and watching them do their Google Meet and the teacher being on the screen, it's just so much more rewarding for the children. They get so much out of that, just being able to see their teacher. We had one teacher that just introduced her dog to the classroom and it, <laughs> just the laughter that came from that and just the socialization that came from that. You know, there wasn't a lesson learned from that, but it was the students just being able to see their teacher's not sick. Uh, they're doing fine. They still care for them. They love, love them. And, uh, and so, yes, definitely, um, that was one of the more refreshing things for me uh, when we did get our children back on campus. We, we, we had to go way too long. And I know Dr. Rhodes has had to go way too long and just, it just brought a whole new energy to our faculty and staff and to our administration. And, uh, and, and so, and I think it did the same thing for our children. And so, um, and so, you know, just trying to provide as much of that as we can, when we can, is, is very important. 
I agree. We're educators because we want to like be with the kids. We didn't, you know, just choose to do this job to do paperwork or file budgets or whatever, but we, we want to be with the kids. So I, I can speak for myself and my coworkers. We're so excited for our kids to come back Tuesday. I see a question. What is the status of all other extracurriculars outside of sports like clubs, theater, band? Um, yeah, I'll pose that to both of you. Okay. As far as theater, of course, we'll be social distancing in our classes. That was another one of the reasons that we chose to do a blended model. So we could continue to offer, of course, our extracurricular with a smaller number, which enables us to social distance. The band is practicing. The band has implemented all of the safety protocols that Georgia High School Association recommended for our fall sports. So they, too, are still practicing. The use of instruments is temporarily postponed for our music classes until we are able to, of course, get to a minimal spread of COVID-19 and we see a decrease in the data. Great. Coach Parrish? Uh, same same for us. Um, yeah, our clubs, they are not currently meeting, but, but we are uh, going to be starting that back up pretty soon. We just wanted to get back into our routine of uh, starting school, but we will have our clubs and their activities going on. Um, mentioned the theater. Uh, yes, we, uh, our music director, is actually our fine art uh, director has actually started working on uh, doing things as far as our one act play which is uh, scheduled to be in november uh, we're going to start having tryouts for that um, she's also in charge of everything with our music department and uh, right now we're not doing a lot of singing um, we are using our instruments but once again sanitizing and disinfecting uh, the instruments when we do use them but uh, the singing we have not started with yet but when we do start that uh, we're actually honestly waiting for it to get a little bit cooler because we're going to go outside to do a lot of that just to, uh, to try to help some with that. But, um, but yeah, we're, we're still um, looking to move forward with all of those extracurricular activities that are not sports related. Okay. Uh, okay. This would be for you, Dr. Rhodes. Will students with special needs be using the blended model? Students with special needs have the opportunity to come in based on the needs of their IEP. That is being handled through our Director of Student Services, Mrs. Angie Rogers. Those contacts have been made. We have been serving some of our special needs students, of course, on campus during this time. Again, that's based on the goals and the modifications listed in that child's IEP. That determines their schedule. Great, awesome, thank you. Thank y'all so much. I know you're crazy busy. We really appreciate it. Um, and yay that all of everyone's internet held out the whole time. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys. Um, I got to give a shout out again to Jefferson Energy. They graciously stepped up and, and um, sponsored this event. Thank you to everybody who's viewed so far. This will be posted on our Facebook page so you can come back and share it with friends who weren't able to watch today. Um, and I got to give a shout out to our producer, Debbie, who ran this whole thing without um, any from a totally different location. So thank you so much. Um, please call or uh, call the chamber if you have any questions or if there's anything we can do for you or your business. Um, and we love McDuffie County. And if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you.